Welcome everyone. In this uh, video, I want to go over frequency data. In the last videos, we did simple data. The second type of data, we can call that a frequency data. And let's see what the difference is from a simple data. So let's see, we're given these numbers, one, two, two, one, three, six, seven, two, one, three, four, four, seven, three, two, five, five. Now, one thing we notice in this data, the numbers are repeated a lot. So what we can do is make a frequency table. That's how we can start and just make the calculations easier and faster. So our uh, data values, we call them X. So we have one and let's see how this table works. So this is just the first table you have to make the one is repeated three times one two three so the frequency of one is three two is repeated four times one two three four so the frequency for two is four the frequency for three is three because we have three threes in the data and so on so you can write your numbers and the frequency for each number so you kind of organize it in this way now, before I get uh, to this part of the table, let's go see what we can find. The first thing you can do with this data, it's the dot plot. So you can write your numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then put for the frequencies, put dots, one, two, three, because the frequency is three. For two, you have one, two, three, four. For three is one, two, three and so on. Now, one thing to this just shows the distribution of the data. So if the distribution looks like a rectangle like this, then you say this is a uniform distributed and you can say the data is uniformly distributed. Next, if you wanna find the mean or the average for this data, the formula is a little bit different for the simple data, we didn't have this F. It was sum of X is divided by N. But for this data, you say X bar is sum of FX divided by sum of Fs. So sum of Fs is just sum of the frequencies. If you add all the frequencies, then you know how many numbers you have in the data. So here it's 17. And FX is the frequency times X. So for the first one is gonna be three times one or one times three, it doesn't make any difference. For the second one is gonna be two times four. I wrote it here, three times three is nine, four times two is eight, five times two is 10, six times one is six, and the last one, seven times two is 14. Then we need the sum of those numbers. If we add all these numbers, you're gonna get 58. So if you wanna calculate the mean, you just take 58, the sum we found, and you divide that by sum of the frequencies and you get 3.4, or here approximately we can say three. Next thing you wanna find is the standard deviation. The formula, again, it's a little bit different from the simple data, take the, check the one with the simple data here, it's square root of n times sum of fx squared minus sum of fx quantity squared times n times n minus one. And we know that n is just sum of the frequencies and we have that here, which is 17. So let's see what we need in the formula. We need f times x squared. f times x squared, first you square each x, that means you square that those numbers, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, six squared is 36, and seven squared is 45. Then we need F times X squared. So it's gonna be that times that number. So three times one or three times one squared is just three, three times two squared is gonna give you 16 and we can go on. Three times nine is 27, two times 16 is 32, two times 10 is uh, 
uh, two times, not 10, but 25 is 50, and one times 36 is 36, two times 49 is 98. We need the sum of these numbers, so we can just add all those and you get 262. You're ready to calculate the standard deviation now. So n was 17 plus sum of x squared, we found that here is 262 and the sum of it is 58 squared divided by 17 times 16. So if you do that, you get 4,454 minus 3,364 divided by 272. And if you do the calculation, you get approximately two. Now the percentiles and correlates, you can use your calculator to find this and I will show that to you in the calculator lecture. Then we have group data. Group data is when we have it just this table. So you are going to be given this table. Sometimes you can group them yourself. So you have the classes 1 to 20, 21 to 40, 41 to 60, 61 to 80, 81 to 100, and you have the frequencies. An example of this, if these are test scores, what's the meaning of that? Three people got from one to 20. Five people got from 21 to 40. And eight people got from 41 to 60. Here, four people got from 61 to 80 and two people got from 81 to 100. Or if these are ages, it could be anything. There are three people aged from one to 20 years old. We have five people from 21 to 40 years old eight people from 41 to 60 years old, and so on. Now there's some definitions with this type of data. Let me go over each one of them one by one. First are the lower class limits. Pretty straightforward. These are the lower class limits. So it's 1, 21, 41, 61, and 81. Then of course, the next one is upper class limits. So it's 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. And I listed them here. Then we have the class marks or the class midpoint is just the average of the upper class limit and the lower class limit. So for the first one is that plus that divided by two. And I wrote it here, it is 10.5. The second one is 21 plus 40 divided by two, which is 30.5. And if you keep going, the next one is 50.5. And uh, again, I'm going to take this one too, so you can see again, 61 plus 80 divided by 2, 61 plus 80, lower class limit plus upper class limit, or vice versa, divided by 2, and you get 70.5 and 90.5. Then we have the class boundaries. The class boundaries, let's see what they are. If you look at those classes, here we go from 1 to 20, then from 20, we jump to 21. So there is a, a middle number between 20 and 21 is 20.5. So that's the boundary. Here, between these two numbers is 40.5. And between these two numbers is 60.5. Here, it's going to be 80.5. However, when we start, we won't start from one. Since we're dealing with boundaries, we're going to start from 0.5 and end at 100.5. So if I list the class boundaries, it's 0 0.5, 20.5, 40.5, 60.5, 80.5, and 100.5. Then we have the class width, and I'll tell you where this is used. The class width is the difference between two consecutive lower class limits. Again, two consecutive lower class limits. So consecutive, that means one after the next one is 21. 21 minus one is 20. 41 minus 21 is 20. And it's always going to be the same number. 61 minus 41, 20. And 81 minus 61 is also so the class width here is 20. I did all of them, but you can just do one and it's just put one. Now, what can we, let's go over the graphs with a 
group data like this. The first graph we can have is the histogram. So for histogram, you list the frequencies on the y-axis and just scale them. So if I look at the frequencies, they go from three to eight. So the smaller one is three, the larger one is eight. So the way I scale that, I said it's a five and then we have 10. And for the x-axis, you place the class boundaries. So the class boundaries, again, they are right here. So these are the class boundaries. Why do you put the class boundaries? Because you don't want to see, when you have a histogram, you do not want to see any gap between this rectangle. Then this is the first class. The frequency is three. Second class is five. Then it's eight, four, and two. So then you draw those rectangles. Now, what can we get from the frequency? As you look at this, you see that it's kind of a bell shape. It goes up and down. So you can say this data is normally or approximately normally distributed. So it kind of gives you the idea of the distribution. Now, uh, then you can see the frequency polygon. For frequency polygon, what, again, you use the class midpoints for the pre frequency polygon. We calculated those. Then you put the frequencies. So the first class, it was three, so it's 10.53. Second one is 30.55, then we had 50.58 and 70.54 and 90.5 we had to. And if you look at the frequency again, it goes, you connect those dots, goes up and down. So you can also kind of see the distribution of the data. One thing very important for histogram, you use the class boundaries or the frequency polygon, you use the class midpoints. Then you have the cumulative frequency graph, or we call that OGIVE. First of all, what is the cumulative frequency? Let's go back to the table and find out. Frequency, that means you add them. So from 1 to 20, here we have 3. So it's the first one. The second one. 20 to 40, you just add those two numbers. So it's three plus five. So that number plus that number is eight. Then for the third one, you add those, it accumulates, it's 16. And uh, finally, or each time you get that, you can add the next one. Then you get 20 and 20 plus two is 22. So these are the cumulative frequencies. The graph for the cumulative frequencies frequency, let's see, or the OGI. Again, the x-axis is very important. You use the upper class limits. Then you put the numbers again, 20. So it's three, then for 40 was eight, 60 was 16 and 80 was 20 and 400 was 20, 20. If you connect those dots, it just goes up. There's some, you can do some readings from this graph. And we're going to see that uh, later. But that's how you make the graph. Next, you want to find the mean of a group data. The mean is exactly like the frequency data. So it's sum of fx divided by n. Sum of fx, what is fx? First of all, go to the table. x are the class midpoints. fx is just that times the frequency. So for the first one is this number times that number, which is 31.5. Second one is that number times that number or vice versa. So if you multiply, you get 120, 52.5, then it's eight times 50.5 is 404, then is four times 70.5, which is 282 and so on. Two times 90.5 is 100. 81. So now you add all these numbers. If you add them, you get 1051. So if you want to find the mean,
you take the sum of the frequencies divided by n, which is sum of the frequencies, 22, and you get 47.5.8 or almost 48. Standard deviation is the same way, so it's n times sum of fx squared minus sum of fx squared divided by n times n minus one. Again, what we need is x squared. First, you square each x. X are the class midpoints again, so don't forget. And then you multiply that by the frequency. And this number, we already have it. Let's go to the table, see how that works. So first you squared each X. So X is right there. 10.5 squared is 110.25. 30.5 squared is 930.25. 50.5 squared is 2,550.25. 70.5 squared is 4,970.25 and 90.5 squared is 8,190.25. F times X squared, you just take the frequency and you multiply it by that number. So the first one you get that, five times 930.25 is 4,621, eight times 2,000, 550.25 is 204,002 and so on. So it's this number times that number. That times that and you put the answer here. We need the sum of these numbers and if you get, we calculate it, it's our number 61,645.5. We have all the numbers to calculate the standard deviation so let's go to the formula. N, we found that to be 22, sum of the frequencies. This number was just show that to 61,645.5. Sum of the frequency FXs, they were 1,051 squared. And again, over 22 times 21. If you do all this and use your calculator, I have all the steps here for you, you should get. 23. So, and uh, this for this lecture, this is enough. But in the next lecture, I will go over the calculator, show you how you can find all this by using your calculator. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Have a good one.